This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. Shout out to Texas musician Wendy Child and her husband Michael. They found out they were expecting a baby and decided that they wanted to introduce the baby while in the womb and obviously once it's out in the world to their favorite music. I've always been so curious what it's like to both be musicians and mm. fall in love. Like, what do you do at home? Just write you know, each other love songs? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, do normal couples, they like watch Netflix or cook together. Do these couples like sing? Do they jam? Do they have sessions well, where they sit down and like, what? Th- what kind of life is that? I think they'd still probably have to cook. No, I know, but... <laughs> they just sing while they're doing it. That would be a dream, to just, like, break out into Broadway. Anyway, so what? what is the songs? What are the uh, songs? They've taken a bunch of 90s jams and turned them into lullabies. You have so many relationships in this life. Only one or two will last. You go through all the pain and strife. Turn your back and they're gone so fast. Cute, yeah, that's right? beautiful, but it also makes me want to hear the original. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, next up. Say it ain't so, I will not go. Turn the lights off. Carry me home. Na, 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 like, what do you do? Got it. All the small things. I love that these are all songs we play on our station, too. Like, Honestly. just jam after jam. Okay, what's next? Backstreet Boys. Yeah, not bad, but the original is way better. No, I know, and but it's just as slow. Well, yeah. The point is though, like they're lullabies. So kids will like them. The only one that I'm I'm not sold on okay. is this. <laughs> and it's mainly because of the lyrics. Like once they're a toddler, you can't play this one for them. <laughs> what anymore. is it? You can't stay here. <laughs> what song is this? Oh. But it's just the, imagine being a kid and like listening as you're falling asleep to like, (laughs) you can't stay here. Are you sick of seeing the Bernie Sanders memes yet? Probably, but they did inject a lot of good humor into our social media feed, uh, feed, so that's great. But not only that, but he actually hopped on the trend himself and quickly added the image that was taken by that photographer Mm -hmm. to his website with merchandise. It was all sold out in under 30 minutes. Whoa. So all of this money went to Vermont-based charities, including Meals on Wheels and senior citizen advocacy br- groups. Oh, I can't talk today. Anyway, they ended up raising $1.8 million in just five days. Incredible. Yeah. Tell me something good. My story is about a 94-year-old man. His house was falling apart around him. His daughter hit the internet in hopes that somebody had an idea. Uh, This guy is a war vet and even a hero, winning some of the biggest honors possible in the military. Uh, So he had a few different groups that noticed the daughter's post or found out about it. The Military Order of the Purple Heart and Broken Warriors Angels to... Uh, groups that are based in his hometown that came together with the help of a bunch of his neighbors and they're rebuilding his house. They put a new roof on it already. Uh, Obviously, the complications of doing this kind of thing uh, around COVID has made it a little more complicated, but it hasn't stopped anybody. Uh, People are doing shift work and putting up new walls. Getting it done. The whole house is going to be renovated. And I think they're even making it uh, a lot easier to access for somebody who has mobility issues. So uh, big ups to just everybody who rallied cool. around a guy who obviously sacrificed a lot for uh, us back in the day when the war was on. Tell me something good.
it's uh, coyote mating season in Edmonton, and that is followed by denning season. So they're horny and hungry. Getting prepared for the winter story of my life. Honestly. Uh, they may be more bold and more visible than usual. So the city tweeted out and is asking that you supervise your pets, especially in your backyard if you live by a ravine, park, or green space. And while walking your dog, please ensure they're on leash in areas not designated off-leash. The coyotes can read the signs, and if it's an off-leash dog area, they'll avoid it. Will they? I may have made that part up. I thought this was really interesting. A single female in heat, meaning coyotes, uh, they can attract up to seven reproductive males, which then follow her. <laughs> it sounds like the bar, right? Listen to this. They will follow her for as long as a month. <laughs> and although there may be some squabbling... Between some of the males, right? The, once the female decides who she wants, the rejected males don't even intervene. They move on wow. to other females. Unlike the bar. What a waste of a month. To figure out who to you're into sh- no, forever? No, no, no. For the males, oh. if there's several of them following this chick, oh. and then she just chooses one and they're just like over it, I've put in and they lot, move on. I've put in a lot more time than a month in the past to only get rejected. <laughs> I do find it so interesting, though, that they're strictly monogamous. Huh. Yeah, they are. And like usually when you see one that's out hunting, especially this time of year, it's the male after they've pregnant, they've impregnated the female and she's just waiting in the den for her food. They'll build their den. The female will usually dig it out. If it's infested with fleas, they'll move on to a new home. They'll move out, move on. I read a really funny comment on the uh, Edmonton Reddit that posted this story and it said, I'd rather deal with a coyote than an anti-masker. <laughs> Kyle, what's up? Something else people should know that follows denning season and when the pups are born, uh, coyotes will do something that most people find very scary, but it's actually safe. They're not going to get hurt or anything. But coyotes do a thing they've called escorting. Okay? So if you walk through, especially in the River Valley, if you walk through uh, a coyote's territory where it has a den full of pups, they will follow you. Right? They're not stalking you. They're not trying to hunt you. They're just trying to see where you are in their territory. And once oh. you leave, they just head back. They're just like, hey, this is this, this creature's kind of big. It's in my space. I'm going to I'm gonna just follow it and see what it does. Cute. So coyotes are allowed to do something called escorting. But when I do, it's illegal. Stop. <laughs> Play 107. So the Oilers lost last night to the Leafs. Ugh. I don't mind losing to the Leafs. There's a lot of talent on that team. You, like, you look at the lineup, they're a good team. Have they ever won a cup? Yes, but not since 1967. What about us? When was the last time we won a cup? 1990. Okay. So, I guess we're better than them, uh, just based on that. But, I, like I said, I don't mind losing a game to them, especially a close one, 4-3. What I don't like is losing a game to their fan base. <laughs> oh, my God, they're annoying. I woke up this morning, four different texts from people I maybe talked to twice a year. And all of them were like, oh, how'd that game turn out last night? Go to bed. Quit texting me at midnight, rubbing it in, twisting the knife. Like, I don't know if any other fan base has fans that do this. I mean, the Battle of Alberta gets pretty competitive. I have a buddy who's a big Flames fan. We chirp each other. But Leafs fans will just like, do you go through all of your contacts and any Oilers fan you chirp? You know, the worst part about it is even I know that this is the case because in elementary, Thomas Hogendorn. Cool name. Yeah, great guy. He wore his Toronto Maple Leafs jersey to school three days a week. Yeah. He had one of those um, jackets that you pull over your head with the little starter starter jacket. That was the Maple Leafs. And I didn't care for for hockey. Mm -hmm. Didn't know anything about it. But I sure knew about the Leafs because he <laughs> right. sat near me in every class. So it's th- they they teach their young. They teach their young. <laughs> yeah, it's true. How to be equally annoying. Uh, so like we need to win tomorrow night at five. <laughs> anyway, I asked on Twitter. I said, "Are Maple Leafs fans the most annoying in the league?" And the three options on the Twitter poll are yes, definitely, or absolutely. <laughs> All eighty votes are agreeing that they are. But uh, crazy. A lot of responses from people claiming that. Habs fans are more annoying. Uh, this tweet I found particularly funny. I've always found Maple Leafs fans worse, especially the ones that randomly start talking in a French accent when they're talking about their team. You're from Vulcan, Alberta, Greg. Shut it. <laughs> I will say every time, and this might be like so rude, but when I was a bartender, if there were a group of Habs fans that came in and sat at the bar, mm-hmm. 
It was so exhausting. Yeah. It was so exhausting to serve them. Really? Oh, they were so loud. So you think, would you They're say, so passionate. from just your experience, that you would say Hab fans are more annoying than Leafs? Yeah, fans. I haven't had to deal with a Leafs fan since grade six, Thomas. You did this morning. We've gotten three calls from guys. Uh, who, I wasn't hey, paying attention. See the score? I last did night? not listen to those Brother calls. Lisa. <laughs> Ugh. It is the tournament of dumb. Just tell us about a time you had a brain fart. I was trying to put groceries in my car, and I put them in, and then I got in my seat and went to put my key in. This was before push buttons. And I thought someone had stole my steering wheel because it wasn't there. And I'm, like, freaking out, and I'm like, my whole dash is gone. And then I looked to the side, and I was in the back seat of my car. What? No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, wow. Then I had to pretend that I like dropped something in the back of my car because people were watching me. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I think that is one of the funniest things I've ever. Yeah, heard we have a clubhouse in leader. my life. It reminds me of a story when I had a few too many beers and I was in a hotel room in Toronto, and I uh, was convinced that I had locked myself in the bathroom. Pulled and I pulled on the door handle and it just would not open. It was the uh, closet. No, and then I ended up ripping the towel rack off the wall when I finally realized I was on the wrong wall. Oh my God. So, wow. Somewhat similar. I can, At least I can blame my mom on beer. I hope you can't do the same. <laughs> no, I was stone sober. That's why it stands out because I was like, yeah. All right, well, thank you for the call. Uh, okay, Ryder, I think I found the leader. What are we calling this segment again? Tournament of Dumb? Yes. Okay, Alyssa, I think you take the cake today. We're just going to laugh about this, though, right? She says, I thought in 2008 I could vote in the American election. I was amping up my friends and family to please vote for Obama, but no one would tell me where to vote or that as a Canadian, I can't. <laughs> I wonder, there would have been two responses to that. People would have been like, I didn't know she was an American citizen as well. And secondly, people would have been like, don't tell her. Don't tell her. I wonder how many people she's told. Aww. I just came across a story out of New Zealand that is making international news. Uh, they've been hailed as one of the world's leaders in containing the virus, COVID-19. Uh, only 25 deaths since the beginning of the pandemic in the entire country. Wow. It is easier to isolate and contain when you're on a small island. So that helps. But they have had like really strict procedures, regulations including any travelers coming in or any like New Zealand residents that were out of country have to isolate in an isolation hotel for 14 days before they can go back into the general public. Have to, have to. And instead of like here where it's like you need to isolate at Hopefully your house. Hopefully you're doing it. Yeah. Right. There they have these hotels set up for that specific reason. Well... The reason this guy got fired is he was an employee at said hotel. Oh, no. And ended up having an encounter with one of the guests. Who was trying to quarantine. Yes, was was quarantined for the 14 days of isolation. They passed a couple notes back and forth, even on, like, the inside of masks. Ooh. Is where they were sending love letters. Uh, he went to deliver a bottle of wine, but delivered a whole bunch more. And... Uh, and got busted. They were in the room together for 20 minutes. He has been fired. Can can they wait two weeks? Like, yeah, we have a crush on each other, but like, let's wait this out. Because what if by chance? Yeah, she had COVID. Right. And then he's gonna like pretend it didn't happen, sneak out, and go back to work and go, like serve food and go back to the real world. No, like, bad. That's they've bad. both tested negative since. Oh, good. There's other precautions they could have taken though as well, like not facing each other. Right. Or that's not. What? Funny. Okay. Ryder and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.